<clears throat> Hello. Howdy. Let me put my phone down. <clears throat> Let's see. And they come tumbling in. Leslie Sacco. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Water Clear. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Charity Blades. Here they come. What's hey. up, everyone? <clears throat> we just let a few people come stumbling in. Is it working okay, guys? Can you hear us? Give us the old thumbs up. <laughs> Northern Michigan. Rotting Doll. What a name. Are we coming in Ooh. loud and clear, guys? What's we're, that? We're gentlemen. Amy Rodriguez doesn't know us very well. She says we're gentlemen. Okay, we're working great. Cool. Thank you, guys. Woo! Okay, again. Hey, guys. It's Grant. All you weirdos out there. Let me adjust this a little bit. Not seeing our guts. Um, yeah, so... Uh, Rian and I are working hard to get things ready for October. Uh, we got a lot... We're working on. Um, so let's say hi to everybody here. Let's say hi to a couple people. Hi from Michelle from California. Oh, wow. Tracy from Alaska. Alaska. Jeez. Oh, Weston Rocco. This guy's got this coolest dog. He gets as excited as he oh, is. Oh, yeah. She was on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice guy. From, from Texas. Texas. James, how are you, sir? <clears throat> Book Nook. I wonder what she talks about Maybe. on her channel. <laughs> So, uh, guys, hi. Um, oh, South Carolina. South Carolina. Be safe. Wait, Amy from North Carolina. Look at that. You guys be safe. I'm glad you have power and internet. That's You're lucky. <clears throat> Ohio. So, yeah, what were you going to say? Uh, so, uh, I want to make sure I try to do at least one live stream a week. And I'm doing it at different times. So, you know, we can experiment, see what works for you guys. But um, <clears throat> uh, I want... I. Uh, was lucky enough to have Connor and Noah in town. Uh, they're going to school at Full Sail down in Florida, but we found some really cheap tickets, so we brought them up for the weekend. Yeah. Um, give them a little taste of, of home again. So this is Connor. He is my oldest. He is uh, 20 years old, and a lot of people see us together and go, holy cow, he looks like you. First off, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and second, um, yeah, I'm his dad. That's why. That's how genetics and biology work. I don't know why people are so surprised. Um, but uh, anyway, so a lot of people, every q and A I I do, people, <clears throat> excuse me, people ask me about my kids. They ask, what are your kids like? What do they like to do? How, what are their thoughts on the paranormal? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I got Connor in town. I'm going to do my normal kind of just Q&A and chat. But if you want to ask questions about Connor, what was it like to be raised a uh, my kid. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> what's works. he into? What's he studying? You know, whatever. Um, or we can just talk about paranormal any and everything. Yeah. So, um, look, Jen says, hi, Connor. Wow. Cute, Cute like, like dad. dad. Whoa, there you go. Why, you thank go. you. Get her number. No, just kidding. Okay. <clears throat> San Diego's checking in. State of Washington. Ever Christine go to Riley. NXT down at Full Sail? Mike. Ever go to NXT? I'm you not sure what NXT is. He hasn't gone to class yet. He's only been there for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Connor. Has your dad always been then cool? This cool, I think, is what they meant. Yeah, he's been a pretty good dad this whole time. Uh, wow. Yeah, he treats me well, you know. A little awesome. psh, once yeah. in a while. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a good dad. Thank Connor, you. did it ever scare you when your dad went on paranormal investigations? Uh, No, not really. It was actually pretty cool. That he was going out and like finding stuff, I guess. Um, <laughs> I think I was scared for a little bit as like a young kid that he would like bring something home, but you know, it never happened. And uh, yeah, uh, I was you never pretty, noticed yeah. when stuff came yeah, home. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're a paranormal investigator, it's not necessarily that stuff follows you home, it may, but. Um, stuff definitely happens at your house and, um, you know, we try to shield the kids from it or <clears throat> we try to help them, you know, see it in the right light. I remember when you guys were little and we were living in that one house in Situate 
And uh, we had to put you guys down in the basement while we were fixing oh, some stuff. Oh, there's Ty. <laughs> Ty in there? Hi, guys. I'm coming in hot. Uh-oh. So you and Noah were sleeping down in the basement, but you were young. And there was the furnace, and it would kick on. Oh, yeah. You know oh, that? yeah. Yeah. It would kick on, and there was this little window in the furnace, so you could see the fire in there. So it would kick on, and go, <clears> poof. <throat> And you guys thought it was a dragon or yes, something? Yes, we thought there was a, like a dragon living in there. What What that made was, you think it was a dragon? Like, what were your thoughts? Like, because it like would boom, we thought it was just like roaring or whatever. And then it would keep going. So we thought it was like sitting in the back of the furnace, like breathing. Because where you were, you couldn't to, see it. You could yeah, just see the light. Exactly. <laughs> we thought it was stuck in there. It's been trying to get out. But what did we do? You showed us the science of it and... You know, told us it was a furnace. Yeah, like, yeah, check it out. It warms the house. <laughs> Killed the magic. Sorry, God. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jamie asked, Grant, is your wife psychic? So um, you'll hear more about that from her when the channel gets going hardcore next month. Um, uh, she'll be sitting in this seat um, every week. Uh, she has definitely has some abilities. Um, all growing up, <clears throat> sorry, and all throughout our marriage, uh, she would know who was going to call and she would know when people are pregnant or if someone was going to pass away. And she was more of an empath, but she was open in many different ways. And then she had a few experiences that happened, you know, as a mom with three young kids, um, some stuff happened to make her feel like she wasn't quite in control of it. And so she shut it down. Um, and she's working now to open it back up now that, you know, our kids are pretty much, you know, they can handle their own most of the time. So. Um, Oksana W. Connor, when you had your first personal parent, <clears throat> when, when you had your first, wow, I can't. Your first personal, your, my first personal, <laughs> first personal paranormal experience. Uh, from what I've been told, my first paranormal experience, I actually can't remember because I was a baby. Um, my mom, uh, she used to was she used to hear humming. Oh yeah. From yeah. the bedroom when my brother and I, when we were babies, um. My mom would go in and she'd see this like ghost, this uh, figure of a lady, you know, humming and singing like singing lullabies, lullabies yeah. to Noah and I while while we were in the crib. Yeah, it's funny because she would uh, she would tell me she would be sitting there watching TV and she'd hear someone singing to the kids through the wall behind her, and she was like freaked out at first, and then she was like, "Hey, well, she's singing them lullabies. She's not slapping them around." Yeah, so she didn't have a problem with it. So. Uh, can you do an impression of your dad when he gets mad, Mike? What the heck? Um, <laughs> you don't have to do it. You can say pass. No, uh, he, you're grounded. <laughs> I don't. No, you don't sound like that. But he gets the he gets the finger. Right. The quieter dad talks, the more mad. Yeah, exactly. Connor, come here. January's got a good question here. January Daniel. Connor, are you an artist like your dad? Great music and artwork, Grant. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't really draw a lot. I used to as a kid. but He's I, a good artist. I was never... I mean, I wasn't really good at it. Uh, but I did write some music. It's nothing like crazy like his stuff. But. It's good. Yours is like... It's like <clears throat> epic video game music. Like, oh, here's a boss fight. Or like, here's... You could definitely write music for video games. It's mine's piano or guitar, you know, I can do that, but you're like here's the full string orchestra and, <laughs> and it's really good. He actually wrote if you've ever seen um the show Haunt Me on YouTube, Haunt Space M E meaning Maine. Uh um one of the main guys on there is a good friend of ours, Ty. He's he's here asking crazy mutant questions. <laughs> um but uh he does a show on the side called um Ty Tuesday and at the end, opening of that, I did the artwork and Connor did the music. <laughs> so it was kind of a fun collaboration. Yeah. What's Ty asking? What your he, powers are? He said, if I had an X-Men mutant power, what would it likely be? Um, Toxic vomit. Probably electricity. Because you can like pretty much control everything with electricity. Um, you know, you can obviously control power. Uh, you can even get down to like the scientific stuff and like turn off someone's brain. Yeah, or go full Thor and Ragnarok. Yes, With Led Zeppelin. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. don't just grab a hammer, and <laughs> fling it. You could even you know act like Thor with electricity, push and pull. I act like Thor without electricity. True. <clears throat> kind of like um, 
Star Lord in the movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just kidding. Connor, uh what? would I use my powers for good or evil? Evil. <laughs> no. I I try to help where I could. Um what are you majoring in, Connor? Caprina Fernandez. Well, Caprina, I am majoring in creative writing for entertainment uh at Full Sail in Florida. And uh what we're basically learning is how to write scripts and prose, mm. uh formatting for all sorts of mediums like comics video games movies um i just finished uh my last class we made a website where we put all of our stuff on it i, I don't need to advertise it but why not tell them where to find it <laughs> unless you don't want to share it. it it's just a lame wix site so it's all right uh <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> sure. but if, if you if you really want to it's uh here i'll, I'll type it in yeah type that sucker in here we go it's going to be coming uh, from me in the chat, guys. I think this is right. See if that works. There you go. Okay. Okay, Jamie says, Grant, have you heard what's going on in the observatory in Sunspot, New Mexico? Yes, I have. Have you heard this story? No. So, um, this little... This observatory in Sunspot, New Mexico, um, it's this little tiny town, and they shut it down and evacuated like it and the post office, um, and there were FBI agents running around, but no one's giving a straight answer as to why. Um, and, but this, it's a sun, it's a solar observatory, so it looks at the sun, not the moon or stars, you know, and um, <clears throat> uh, it's also looking out over uh, a couple of the. Uh, the Air Force bases in the area. It was actually built by the government back in the day. Interesting. And um, weird stuff. Not quite sure why it's it's shut down or why the FBI is involved. But uh, my, I mean, everyone of course thinks well they saw a UFO. But why shut shut it down? I mean, <clears throat> I get maybe get the people out of there and debrief them or brainwash them or whatever. Um, but I uh, I like to start on Earth. So, I mean, to me, an evacuation is typically, um, you think maybe there's a leak of some type, you know? Yeah. Um, but there was no kind of hazmat stuff going on there. Um, but right now it's a mystery and no one has the answers. And it just kind of happened this week. So uh, I think we'll play it out and see what happens. Mm. <clears throat> there's a good question. Go ahead, scroll um, back up. <clears throat> this one. My husband is related to Chris Pratt. No, that's wow. not the question. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> yeah. There you go. This one. Why don't spirits... Okay, Tracy Graydon. hope I said that right. Why don't spirits with unresolved issues haunt people they know or can understand them better more often? So, Tracy, here's the problem. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people just aren't listening. So, think about it. If a ghost is haunting someone, a lot of people say, well, ghosts can't be real because if I was a ghost and I needed help... I'd be dancing in front of the camera all day long. Well, maybe they are. We just can't see them. I don't think ghosts are necessarily in control of when they appear and when they don't. So imagine if you needed help and you're doing everything in your power to be heard by someone, but they're not reacting. They don't notice you're there. Um, <clears throat> so if that's the case, like how are they going to respond to you? And even people who are listening to the entities trying to get them to talk to them can't see them or have a hard time interacting with them. Um, so I think they are trying, and but they're going to try to talk to people who are able to listen to them. And even the people who are able to listen to them have a hard time. Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> Is Dead Uncle Fred still at Disney? Is Dead Uncle Fred? <laughs> <laughs> January, love it. So if you've watched some of my talking head videos, and there are more on the way, um, yeah, you'll learn that I talk about dead Uncle Fred, and he's not the best person. <laughs> I mean, he just is, everything you've hated about a relative is summed up in Uncle Fred. And we are at the Haunted Mansion, and sure enough, there's a tombstone of, of Fred. So, I hope he's there, but I hope that when I go there, he's not there. He's not that kind of guy, you know? He just don't really want to share the air with that guy. You just kind of got to <laughs> deal with it, I guess. Uh... Robin Hoffman, why are animals better able to sense spirits? Oh, so that's a tough one because we don't really know they are. 
like a lot of people talk about their cat behaving strangely, like staring up at the corner. And uh, we've since learned scientifically that cats um, actually stare at corners to reduce stress. It's like their version of yoga. They'll stare at corners and that relaxes them. So if you find your cat staring at corners a lot, um, maybe try to chill out your cat's life a little <laughs> bit. Um, but also, uh, you know, sometimes dogs will stare at weird places and bark or cats. And there's a lot that goes on that in their minds that we don't um, experience. Like they can smell more. Uh, they can see and hear more. And a lot of times there are rodents in the walls or, or pests in the walls that the animals are hearing and reacting to that just don't register for us. So the problem is, I mean, you could sit down and have an interview with a dog about what it's hearing. Um, you're probably not going to get very far, but um, we just don't know if they're actually experience enti experiencing entities or not. I mean, we hardly know if, if us humans are. So cats are the worst. Thank you, Mike. I don't hate cats. I'm not a cat <laughs> hater. I just wouldn't own one. You know, I like dogs. Dogs live with you. Cats are like a roommate. You, you know? live with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like the old saying, like, um, you know, you feed a dog and the dog gets the food and it's like, oh, this is the best. You must be my, you must be a god. Thank you for giving me food. And you feed a cat and the <laughs> cat goes, oh, you gave me food. I must be a god. That sounds exactly. it up. No, thanks. Okay. Okay, uh, Ken Martin, I've had the exact same incident happen to me in three different houses I lived in. What do you think that's all about? Um, well, okay, so that's either going to be, um, it's going to be uh, a, a persistent entity that's really trying to get you to interact with them. So it's repeating the activity or it could be a residual haunting and you're merely bringing the material that has the residual haunting energy trapped in it with you. Um, to each location. So let's say you had, I don't know, some crazy tiki mask you got at a yard sale and the residual haunting is, is kind of the energy is trapped in that. It doesn't matter where you go. As long as that mask is there, the energy may um, repeat itself. So, <clears throat> Resro, hello from France, guys. Wow. Wow, France. Away. Jeez, what time is yeah, it? Yeah, what time? What time is it there, Resro? Either you're insomniac or I don't know. Okay, Al Vena, have you ever personally witnessed a bleeping alien? Either of you, not a bleeping one, but um, no, I've had a lot of uh, paranormal UFO encounters. That's actually what used to intrigue me before uh, the ghost stuff entered my life. But um, well, you haven't seen an alien, have you? Other than Lindsay, who's an alien. <laughs> my manager, I call her the alien. Talk about. Uh, close contact or whatever, whatever it is. First con close encounters. Know. Close encounters. That's what it is. <laughs> I've never uh, experienced an alien, but I have seen some really crazy UFO stuff. Okay, there uh, was there was one. Ghost, Someone ghost. has someone's been keeping track of me. Connor, did well, you? Well, you're here, so let's answer Connor questions. Connor, did you take Chip Coffee's advice on the cruise to look into taking law? How accurate was his reading for you? Oh, that's Joe. Yeah, that, that's that was a while ago. That's wow. How, that was like about two years, years ago. Wait. No, that was New Orleans. How long ago was that? That was a while. Three years ago. Yeah, dang. Well, uh, I've considered it, but I know that I want to make... So wait, you went to Chip Coffee. Yeah. Or you did, what was I, it, a gallery reading? Yeah, it was a gallery reading. And Chip meant... Like, no, uh, he, he did like specific things where he would like talk to a person and uh, he would like reach out for that person and so someone in the audience he's waiting for someone to recognize it or no 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 like you bring up someone he tries to oh get them to contact with you okay and i did grandpa woody and uh basically chip told me to consider looking into law like grandpa woody yeah like grandpa woody anymore. um it's 120 in the morning for in france wow sorry that's, continue that's late um <clears throat> but yeah like i said chip considered told me to consider law and uh yeah like i said i i've considered it but you know i want to go into the in entertainment industry yeah law like maybe like it just doesn't resonate with you i think you're yeah. so creative i mean even trying to decide what you want to focus on in college was tough you know you mm -hmm. 
you can write music, you can make videos, you can write stories, you can draw, you just everything creative. And that's hard. I was the same way where I didn't know where to direct my efforts. Um, so, but yeah, uh, I'm learning how to write and, uh, referring to someone's question earlier, um, if there was a place I wanted to go, uh, I want to work at, you know, Disney or Blizzard helping write, you know, shows or video games, you know, like, wow. I thought it was cool how, um, you, uh, you wanted to write specifically for animation. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was cool. He's telling me, I said, why? And he said, well, because, you know, let's say you, you write a story about uh, a movie that takes place in Mar- on Mars or some alien planet on the future. Like to film that with live actors costs more money because it's an exotic atmosphere rather than a cop drama in New York City. Exactly. But if you're doing... You can do anything car- in a cartoon. In a cartoon, it's going to... You could just go... It could happen anywhere. And you can change, you could have a hundred sets a, a minute if you wanted, but mm-hmm. it, it doesn't cost anything. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. T-Town Mary Ellen. How can you tell the difference between a residual haunting and an intelligent haunting if you don't have the tools to ask questions and get answers? Um, so keep in mind, um, like, let me put it this way. If, imagine there was a video of somebody standing in front of you, like you're watching a movie of a person um, and you go to talk to that person, they're not going to respond to you because they don't know you're there. It's just a video. Um, Whereas if you stand in front of a real person and talk to them, it'll interact with you. That kind of sums it up. Like a residual haunting is just a video. There's no intelligence there. It's just this energy replaying back and forth. Like if you went and watched this very video, you know, tomorrow, and are trying to ask us questions, we're not going to react to them. We're now a residual haunting. Um, So now if it's not that visible, you're just looking for repeated activity that doesn't respond to you. You know, so if you're asking EVPs and stuff, like let's say you're doing, well, you say without the equipment. So um, you're just looking for repeated activity. Let's say you get a journal and in that journal you write down every experience you have at your house and you notice that it you know it's a woman walking down the hallway it's a woman walking down the hallway it's well it may you may not have any visible rhyme or reason as to why or when this lady is walking down the hallway but she's always walking down the hallway chances are it's residual okay uh resro from france let's give him some love uh do you want to basically he's saying do you have the project to go to paris one day do you want to go to paris one day uh, I actually did an event in Paris a few years ago. Um, there's a team out there called RIP, um, and uh, they invited me out, and I did an, uh, an event with them and Vanessa Michelle, who ran the event. And I was able to bring my wife and, and my son Noah with me. Sorry, Connor. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, and, um, and we had a, a great time. It was neat doing an event out there with translators and stuff. And the French people, I don't know, in America they think the French – there's a stigma that they're just like rude. Um, and I didn't experience that once there. Um, uh, but I, I did try to like dust off the French from high school and I think I did all right. And maybe that helped. Um, maybe if you do get the project to go to Paris one day, I can come next time. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Chainless plug. Okay. Um, let's see. The Wizard of Oz. Hey, what? Hey. <laughs> oh hey wizard pay no attention to the man behind the chat <laughs> okay Ramona I thought it said bums sorry Ramona Burns can you explain how a spirit can show up on a thermal imager that's kind of intriguing to me I'm not sure um, so the theory of it all goes back to the theory of cold spots so you know in investigations I feel cold spot I feel cold spot well the theory behind that is that the entity is drawing the thermal energy from the air and that's causing a cold spot. Um, but so when we grabbed the thermal imaging camera, we were expecting to see little blobs of cold air, but it doesn't quite work that way um, because it doesn't read the temperature of the air. It has to bounce off of something because it uses infrared light. So, um, uh, so it's not going to measure a, a cloud in the air unless the cloud is dense enough to reflect the infrared light. Um, 
So, uh, you know, we catch figures on them and, and it just, we're not seeing it with our eyes, but we're seeing the figure. It's very weird. I don't know how it works. Um, and these are some of the questions I want to get answered as we, we move into the depths of this channel. Okay. I have a son named Noah too. Wow. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Kathy Peterson, how do you tell the difference between a sensitive and a psychic? How do you know which one you are? Woo! That's a question. Uh, there's a lot of, like, that's kind of semantics. Kind of like a lot of people get in these big arguments about what's the difference between a ghost and a spirit. And it's all an open to interpretation. But <clears throat> but uh, psychic and sensitive, usually uh, uh, sensitive is a broader term. At least that's how I use it. Like, we're all sensitive. In one way or another some are it's a gradient so some are at the the low end of the spectrum and others are at the high end of the spectrum and we fall all in between um so a psychic i think might be people who are leaning towards the far end of the spectrum people who really kind of can get real valuable information maybe like a two-way communication but um again another the subject I plan to tackle in the future and you know I'll talk to those who actually have those abilities uh, where I don't so what do you got uh, this one and P have you ever asked if the entity can see you and if so did you get a response yes so I ask that question quite frequently you know whenever I get good communication like through flashlights or EVP or um, K2 meters, whatever, any kind of interactive device, um, I always try to ask, what do we look like to you? Or I'll say, you know, do we look the same as you? Or do we look like shadows? And um, almost every time I get that we look like shadows to them. And I talked about that in one of my videos um, mm -hmm. about equipment, basic equipment placement. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so I, I talk about how knowing that we could look like shadows to them makes you take a different approach with investigating. You want to, uh, you kind of have an uphill battle because you're intimidating looking. Yeah, exactly. You look like Kylo Ren in the corner over there <laughs> when, when you really want to look like, uh, I don't know, Mickey Mouse, you know? Um, so check out that video. It's called, I think it's called Basic Equipment uh, Placement um, on this channel and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, uh, Andrew Monica Grant, do you think you are psychic? Do you see ghosts every day? I am... I have certain sensitivities, but they're not in the ghost realm, um, which I'll get into later uh, uh, in my videos later. I have to tell that story. Like I said, my origin story, I'm going to tell it. Um, uh, so um, I, when you do something long enough, you get a knack for it. Um, I've attuned to myself. I've learned how to pay attention to my level of sensitivity which is very low but you do something long enough you get a knack for it so <clears throat> i mean i can walk into a house or a room and be like okay uh know where to set up and kind of get a vibe for it but i'm not psychic i can't tell you what the entity's name is or what they wear like i don't i'm lucky enough to have seen full body apparitions a lot but not because i'm psychic my psychic stuff i don't know is more with elemental stuff so Okay, so Connor, like, I remember when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. You're a big 20-year-old now. <laughs> I remember when you were a kid, and you used to get so upset when, like, you'd have a teacher that was, like, a fan of ghost hunters, and they start to treat you differently. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was that like? So, being, what is it? tell them about the song. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was, can I? Yeah, go for it. So, um... Connor has all these friends, you know, growing up, and, and they used to, every once in a while, I'd hear this term, SOG, 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 and they used to call him SOG, and I was like, what? Finally, after a while, I was like, what is SOG? What does that mean? And he's like, SOG, son of Grant. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, it makes me sad, like, you know, I hope it didn't, you know, having a dad that was on TV, and I didn't, like, bring that home with me, you know? No, yeah. And, and you, uh... But you, you know, you felt the effects of that, and it wasn't always positive, yeah? Um, 
Yeah, there were times where like uh, friends or oh, bye so Resro, cool. he's going to sleep. Oh, bye Resro. Bonsoir, whatever. Uh, <laughs> au, au revoir. revoir. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there were people that would, uh, you know, want to be my friend, and um, they'd, you know, come over to visit at a time when my dad was home, and you know, they'd be like, "Whoa!" And it's like, and you're like, "Big deal." Yeah, he's my dad. <laughs> uh, let's go play some Halo, um, and then. Um, there would be times where they would come over when my dad wasn't home and they just get bored, you know, and sometimes they leave early. Um, so I learned very quick um, to pick and choose and t kind of tell who actually wants to be my friend. Um, That's a valuable <laughs> skill. Yeah. Yeah. It helps. Uh, but when it comes to teachers and stuff, there, there actually wasn't a lot that really knew. Um, I know in my freshman year of high school, my history teacher... She was actually really nice, um, but she was a super fan, and she'd always... I I learned to... Uh, <clears throat> not that I didn't pay attention, but I learned to pay a lot of attention because she would always put me on the spot with, like, questions and quizzes and stuff. And, yeah. But she was she was really cool, really nice. Uh, yeah, let's let's get some good questions. I okay. don't want to talk about myself. Uh, well, you're here. You're... I know, but it's... I'll be here every week. True. And we'll eventually get to the point where we could call you in if you wanted. But yeah. okay, okay, this is an interesting question. I I feel like I should answer it. Hamiltucky, that's a crazy name. Hamiltucky <laughs> Paranormal. Uh, we are getting a, I guess, an opportunity. So okay, so he might have an opportunity to, to have a show of some sort. What was oh. the first thing you did when you were offered your show? Did you get an entertainment lawyer, and did you guys already copyright copyright the Taps name? Yeah. So um, Taps was already. Um, uh, I don't know, copyrighted, yeah, I think it's trademarked or whatever. Um, we had that for a while and we did our logo, you know, I, I trademarked the logo and all that. <clears throat> um, so my story was a little bit different. Like I didn't like say, hey, I have an idea for a show, let's go do it. And we did it. Uh, we never sought out the, the media at TAPS. Um, um, we got contacted by the New York Times, and they wanted to do a Halloween fluff piece about us. And we were like, sure, why not? And so they sent up this guy, John Leland, and he came on an investigation with us. And uh, on the investigation, the team was able to disprove everything in the house. And that caught him off guard. Um, so uh, he actually ended up writing a really, really good article about us and what we were doing um so uh it, it was really well done he was impressed with what we were doing not just running around trying to summon things and stuff and so <clears throat> that went out the next day on the wire to 140 something newspapers and um then all the calls came in so people came to us hey networks and production companies hey come do a show and back then it just wasn't cool guys it absolutely wasn't cool to do what we were doing and it was very private and so uh, we shut it down five different times. I mean, more people offered, but um, we actually went to production companies. This one guy um, in, in um, New York, who is still my, my agent to this day, um, said he'd meet us halfway in, in Connecticut. We met, we had dinner, and he put together an idea of a show, of a, a drama based on Jay and I and our team. So actors would portray us. And that was cool because we could get our message out there, but still have our anonymity. And um, <clears throat> um, so we went and pitched that because I was comfortable with that. Okay, let's try that. And uh, But every production company or network, they were like, it has to be real or no one's going to care. And we were like, no thanks. Have a good day. Um, and then finally our agent came to us and said, look, the idea is out there. If you don't do it, someone else will. And how will they represent the field that you love? And you're like, fine, we'll do 10 episodes and quit. So it's a little different story, um, maybe. Um, so you, you, you've you got an opportunity in front of you. Absolutely, the first thing you want to do is get an, an agent to handle it. Um, an entertainment lawyer, yes. Definitely, uh, don't sign anything. Keep working down, walking down the road and seeing if this pans out for you. And what you want to look for is 
do they have the right vision? Does their vision match yours? And do they value um, your values? Like, do they realize, are they going to encourage you to try to fake something? Or are they hoping you'll catch a ghost every episode? Or, you know, just make sure the values align and make sure that you these people feel like they're an extension of you. Because if they don't, once you sign that contract, it's going to be very hard. And in that contract, you want to make sure that um, there's nothing in there that tells you you have to act a certain way. Like, yes, you have to show up and yes, you know, you have to participate, but, um, you know, make sure you can say what you want to say or else you're not representing yourself. It's tricky. It was a, it was a very tricky game. Um, yeah, I don't know if I answered your question or not, but okay. Caprina Fernandez, where did you come up with the name? What the fetch? It's great to see you back. So I went to uh, college in Idaho for a little bit and then Utah, uh, mostly because that's where my brothers were going to school. Um, they went to one school, I went to another. I went to Utah Valley College down there, which is U of U now, and that's where I met my wife. And in Utah, they don't swear a lot. Um, and I just never really was a swearer growing up. And, and so I would they say things like, what the frig, what the fetch, and it just stuck. Um, and uh, I actually looked up fetch, you know, because like, what does this word mean? And I always thought of the game you play with the dog. But fetch is old, old word for like um, a spirit or a, an entity that looks like someone you know, you know, um, almost like a doppelganger. Um, um, so I used to say it on Ghost Hunters all the time. In fact, they, they bleeped me out twice. In like the first couple episodes, I was like, what the fetch? And when I said fetch, they bleeped it out to make it sound like I said something <laughs> that rhymes with duck. Um, uh, but I didn't. So I had to call him out on that. I'm like, guys, just no, that's ridiculous. Don't. Let's stay as real as possible. And uh, it became a, a phrase that people caught on to. And I thought, um, you know, hey, uh, YouTube channel, I want to talk about weird things. I don't want it to be, I don't want to be haunted or ghost. Like I want to talk about everything crazy and really get under there. And I thought anything that really makes you say what the fetch or what the WTF for real, you know? <laughs> um, okay. Thank you for answering. We are in the same. Connect. Okay. Uh, Hamill Tucky, uh, hit me up on uh, Facebook through messenger and let me, let me help you a little more, okay? I just would hate to see you get railroaded. Okay. Becky Miller, are there any Ghost Hunters apps that you recommend? No. <laughs> well, that, was, that, was, that was easy. <laughs> so um, there are a lot of Ghost Hunters apps out there. If you notice, most of them have a little asterisk that says for entertainment purpose only. Um, and that's fine. Um, they're fun. But I won't, I'm not going to name any specifics, but... I mean, all you really need to going into an investigation is like an EMF detector and an audio recorder. So they have apps that say they act like EMF detectors. I don't know. The equipment inside the phone is not designed and calibrated for that. So get yourself a cheap mel meter or something. And then, yeah, you can use your phone to record audio. No worries. The okay. Paranormal Nerd. Grant, I heard you developed your own Elven language. Where did you hear that? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't developed my own elven language, but ever since the age of 12, I've been creating a world, uh, a high fantasy world like um, like Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. And um, it's got very believable magic. It covers a span of over 2,000 years. Um, not every day, but the story does. And um, <clears throat> yeah, in that world, I, you create, I created cultures, religions, magic, um, you've seen this stuff, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. And I created five different languages. Now, when you see made up languages, it's usually just a new alphabet. Um, or they make up just a few different words. words yeah. yeah. Like mine, I have books somewhere in here. I have full books that are, um, you know, it's all the grammar, um, and why they have that grammar. Like there's one language that has seven different words for love because, I love my wife in a different way than I love my son and I love chocolate cake or whatever. I love pie more than in a different way than I love either of those. So it's stuff like that. Once you create a culture, you know what these people are and then you bring that those people to life 
through the language. And um, I can actually speak one a little bit with my wife. It's fun to be able to say stuff and people don't know uh, what you're saying. And you know they don't know what you're saying. Like she's the only other person on the planet that would know. Anyway. Here you go. That's a fun one. What? ML Bullock. Hey, what are you planning to do for Halloween? Anything spooky? <laughs> so Halloween for me, uh, I don't know. You're probably the same. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. Halloween for me is is less like gory, oh, yeah. dead babies. Yeah. It's more like skeletons and witches and the, the, black cats. And It's not horror. It's spooky. Yeah, it's fun. It's I like fun Halloween. I like pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns and bats and bats and like spider webs. Yeah. Not chainsaws and Yeah, and, and like and... guts hanging from like hooks and stuff. It's not my thing. You guys got to see our house at some point. Put it up on Instagram around oh, Halloween yeah. because we go all out. <laughs> yeah, we 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 usually replace just about every bulb with a black light or a colored light this is, <laughs> this is on halloween like the party night but. yeah my mom she has like a whole playlist of like just halloween themed music that she just blasts every single day of october yeah we just go all out it's crazy and i mean why not uh but uh usually i mean when i was filming ghost hunters halloween night was filming a live show which was great for you guys but i wasn't home trick-or-treat with my guys and so that that wore off you guys would go, what, go trick-or-treating and then come back and try to watch it a little bit? Or? Yeah, mom would take us out trick-or-treating. We got to the point where uh, we had someone who had, like, an ATV hooked up to, like, a a hayride that all the kids would ride in. So, uh, Or you go around on the golf cart, yeah? Yeah, on the golf cart. But uh, when he <laughs> was doing the Halloween specials, um, mom was in close contact with dad or as, uh, as much as, you know, he could because he was filming. But uh, we go, we get on the ATV, blast every house, you know, get it out of the way, come back in time for him to say hi. So it was, it was nice. Yeah, and if you watch those, you'll see me saying hi to my kids. Exactly, yeah. A little tear. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, I mean, Halloween for me, there's just a vibe when you're and It's that night and it's trick-or-treating and the sun's going down and there are kids in costumes running everywhere. It's just, there's nothing like it. And it's such a fleeting thing. That's my favorite thing to do. Um, but we always watch... Like these old Halloween cartoons. Mm-hmm. Rihanna loves these old crazy cartoons. Disney's you know, like Halloween tree. Dancing skeletons yeah. and stuff. Uh, but what are you doing for Halloween this year? You're hitting, uh, you're down in Florida where there's yeah. Universal, right? Yeah, um, I'm planning on trying to hit Halloween Horror Night at some point. Because um, it's all like 80s themed. They got like Stranger Things, uh, Michael Myers, all that stuff. Like Stranger Things? Are they going to pump a bunch of like pollen in the air and I hope not. You go to the under sign? I know that... Uh, upside down? Um, they have, like, the upside down, and you can, like, go in it. I'm sure they have, like, the wow. demigorgon that, like, pops out. Hmm. Um, but as far as Halloween night, I have no idea. I might just sit in and watch a scary movie, keep the lights <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, like, what do you... you know, I mean... You're not going to get trick-or-treaters. Yeah, there's a few kids that live where we do. You're like, I'm a college kid. I can't afford yeah, to give exactly. you candy I'm or ramen. To, Here's, not give not them water. Yeah. Give yeah. Them, like a plastic bag full of water. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> That's all I can afford. Just give them a, a small like bag that just has one cracker in it. <laughs> Half a cracker. Half a cracker. Sorry. I can't afford that. Um, okay, so... Guys, both of you need some mods in here to keep the trolls and spamming away. All right, I, I will work on that. Thank you, Amy. Uh, here's one for both of us. Deborah Bryant. Grant Connor, what are your favorite ghost movies? She loves the 1940s Uninvited. Oh, yeah, 1960s Haunting. Hmm. Uh, ghost movies? Uh, I think um, The Others was done really, really well. I think that really gives you some insight into the way what it might be like to be an entity, you know? One of my favorite ghost movies, it's not really, I guess it is really a ghost movie, is uh, Crimson Peak. Uh, that movie does a really unique take on ghosts, and it just tells a really fun story. Um, that and, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Yeah, never mind. What The movie? What is it? Sorry, I'm I, I don't. I don't remember it. Um... It was a good one. Let's see. Go to Disney's Not So Scary Halloween. I actually uh, am planning on doing that. Stop it. <laughs> we want to go so bad. 
Uh, okay, Amy, I'm going to make you a mod. Is that cool? Oh, wow. Here we go. Ready? Dun, this is your chance. Thank you. We appreciate you being the bouncer. Oh, here we go. Ramona. Connor, what is your major? Ramona. I missed it. Uh, I'm doing creative writing for entertainment. So learning how to write movies, comics, TV shows, like mature and for kids and stuff. How um, different is it to like write for a TV show versus a comic? Like, what are the, what is that like? Um, I actually haven't gotten to that class yet. Which one? Comic? The one? comic class. Oh, yeah. so pick two other other two things. Um, so writing for books versus a and TV versus show. writing yeah for a TV show. The thing about like when you're writing books. Oh, the fog. That's good. Yeah. Sorry. The fog. Um, when you're writing for a, a book, you have the opportunity to really. You can spend a whole book about a guy sitting in a room listening to the voices in his head. Um, mm. And you can write about all the emotions and stuff, but when it comes to a script, the main rule that they tell you is you can only write what you see on the screen. Um, like, so you can't write about, you know, feelings. You can't write about, like, their inside, you know, the motives. Inner or dialogue. Inner yeah. dialogue, yeah better word. yeah because that gets old in a movie when you just hear people yeah. talking like if you don't want to go to a movie and see a dude sitting in a room you know hearing voices telling him you know oh uh go outside for example you know go make some toast you mm. know <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah in a book you can you know you can write about you know what's led him in his life to be sitting in this room you know for example you know just you can get really into the nitty-gritty wow yeah, so it's important to, like, pick the right medium to tell your story. Exactly. Like, yeah. there are some stories that have come up where I have to write it prose. Some stories where I have to write it as a script because it's just better to write it that way. Jen Usher, is there any truth to the Conjuring movies? So, uh... Yes. Like, I've investigated the house there. Um, Amy's on it. Look, they even give her a wrench she can hit people with. Boom, click, calm down. Look at the wrench. Oh, snap. She's on it. Go get him. Release the hounds. Uh, sorry, we're easily distracted. Um, the Conjuring, yeah. I investigated the house. I know Andrea, who uh, grew up there. Um, and, uh, I mean, you'd ask her about the movies, and she's like, eh, they got, it's amazing some stuff they got right, and a lot of stuff she they didn't get right. So, um, and they made certain people in the movie uh look like saints and uh when they necessarily <laughs> weren't um but anyway um yeah watch those movies with a grain of salt watch any hollywood movie with a grain of salt and this is kind of my mission now and it always has been it but it's more focused now than ever and that is like <laughs> like for example you go into a halloween haunted house right mm -hmm. and you expect a certain experience you expect cool sets and you expect people to pop out and be scared but it's all in fun right yeah that's a halloween haunted house experience but if you go into a real haunted house you don't expect that same experience um so we know that separation mentally right like you go into one you expect a regular haunted house you expect it to be that you go into a halloween one you expect something else and what i want to do is to remove the undue fear in the paranormal. There is some stuff you have to be careful of, but I want to remove all the undue fear. So like when you go to watch a movie, like The Conjuring or whatever, go because it's like a Halloween haunted house. Go yeah. for a cool experience, cool effects, chilling story and be surprised. But don't expect that to reflect the real paranormal in any way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think part of my job is to help separate that. Like, yes, this is true about the paranormal and this isn't and this is exaggerated and so on and so forth um i don't know that makes sense yeah yeah All i right. mean when i was a kid you know i watched a scary movie and i thought that was what it was like and you had to talk me down and like you know <laughs> you explained how it worked and you know it's it's very clear to separate it you know uh, you're not gonna have a person flying at you with like blood coming out of their mouth you know with like a bag <laughs> over their head you know that's now, not going to happen to you right now if you are a, a super uh, clairvoyant where you can see the dead you might see something like that but everybody in their house like it just doesn't work like that you're not going to see uh, something with no eyes and no mouth crawling across the yeah. ceiling now you may see something with 
black holes where there eyes used to be where, where there were eyes. No, but a, a normal person would. But that's well, an yeah. indication of something negative. If you see an incomplete figure, that could be something negative. But it's not. It's it's very simple in concept the paranormal to me but in execution it's it is complicated yeah okay let's see what we got back in there oh that's very nice thank you mary leanne Just never say thank you enough for all you've done it's nice to not always be thinking i'm going to hell because something walked through me Educating people on paranormal is huge. Yeah, I never understood that. Why, you know, I'm living my life and I see a ghost. Now all of a sudden I'm going to hell or I'm affected by the devil or whatever. Like, what? How did that happen? You know, and I never understood the mentality of, of doing that. Amy, what whatever this person's doing, can you just get, can you get rid of them or whatever? What's yeah. going on? Hit him with the wrench. <laughs> right over there. <laughs> um, okay. Dion, why do you think 3 a.m. seems to be a more active time than others, the witching hour? Okay, that is a real thing, the witching hour. Now, in occult circles, um, that has more meaning, um, but that affects living people. Um, uh, the witching hour is a combination of things. Um, 3 a.m., so a lot of people are in the misconception that we fall asleep and we sleep for eight hours or six hours or whatever and we wake up. But we actually, if you sleep eight hours, you're actually sleeping in two, if you sleep well, two four-hour cycles. So you go to deep sleep and you come out of it and then you go back. And um, when you're coming out in and out of sleep, it's hypnopompic and hypnagogic states where your mind absolutely, absolutely cannot tell the difference between uh, fact and fiction. So you're kind of half, in, you know that situation where you're half dreaming and you're half awake. Mm -hmm. um, so things can happen in there that aren't really happening. Your body has can feel like it's happening. Now, yeah. think about it. You go to bed. Most people go to bed 10 or 11 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock around that time. So when you're coming out of that fourth, that first four-hour cycle, it's usually around 3 a.m. Yeah. And, um, and But honestly, in the negative circles, the negative side of paranormal stuff um, – that seems to be uh, a big factor too. And I think it's just because mentally we're, we're off and there's not a lot of people awake and around to support you. And that makes it easier for a negative entity to, to have control. It's a very complicated subject. Maybe I'll do a video just on the witching hour. Uh, what do we got? Go. Uh, Glenda McLum. Grant, can you please give your take on the Mothman? <laughs> Everyone loves to talk about the Mothman. That, again, needs to be a big video by itself because there's a lot. I have a case to make with it. And um, it's a type of entity that I call a slow burn. And I actually have some friends right now that I think are being affected by one. Um, so... Uh, a slow burn is a negative entity that instead of trying to attack one person when they're weak, it tries to, it takes a long time to affect one person or two people to affect many. So like, let's say Connor's over here is, is addicted to drugs and all this stuff and his life is in crap. And here I am a negative entity. He's like, mm, this one's tasty. And I, I wear his will down and separate him from all the support groups so that he'll turn his will over to me and allow me to hurt him or other people. Okay, that's kind of the Cliff Notes version there. That's a regular negative, but a slow burn is like, oh, Connor is, he's he's in a situation where he's got some influence on people and he's maybe there's something about him that allows me to get in and start to make him obsess about something or rely on something or build his whole life around one concept. And then his passion and all that will incite other people and then I will pull the rug out from under them and they'll all fall. And this is, um, honestly, I've seen this pattern happen. Uh, you see evidence in it in a lot of these occult places, you know, like these people who build compounds and, and all these people follow them. Um, that's, that's evidence of it too. So it's a long story. I think Mothman was, was something like that. Woo! Here you go. Caprina Fernandez, 
Grant, what about those who are scratched by spirits? I thought they can't harm you. Uh, so, Caprina, uh, entities absolutely can harm you. I've been hit, punched, grabbed, slapped, pushed, scratched, shoved um, by things I can't see and some things I have seen. So, um, they absolutely uh, can harm you. They can't do great harm. I've never seen... I can't say... That, I won't say they can't, but I've never experienced one where the entity itself has caused severe harm or death. Uh, there was a woman that um, said a ghost stabbed her. And when we found out the real story, um, she kept her knives on top of the fridge. I think she had cats. Who, who does that? But she kept them up high away. And she saw an entity and it approached her and it scared her. So her own fear made her react back into the fridge and a knife fell off and stabbed her shoulder. Oh, wow. So the entity didn't stab your shoulder. Your own fear did. And a lot of people do that too. They'll say it pushed me down the stairs when you were simply at the top of the stairs when you got scared and you fell down. So um, it's it's good to try to erase the fear. You can be surprised by them, but the fear makes you act irrationally and, and, and you hurt yourself. Okay, we're getting close to the end here, huh? Yeah, uh, let's see. Stephen Smith. When you hear an entity knocking on the wall, is it actually knocking in a physical sense, or is it creating the sound some other way? So we don't know. Um, uh, if you hear a sound, but there's no actual movement, um, that's a residual. So let's say like, oh, we heard a door close, but the door didn't, or open and close, but the door didn't actually open or close. That's going to be residual because it's not actually happening. It's the energy trapped. Um, so some knocking can be that. Um, some knocking can be actual, yes, the entity is doing, found a way to make it himself solid or whatever to knock on the wall. And sometimes it's just, you know, maybe they're knocking on something in their world and it's passing on to us. So we don't keep in mind all these, this stuff. We don't really know for sure. We can only guess. Okay. We got a few, uh, Grant, is there a room above you? I keep hearing noises. No. That's There's, probably my brother. We've got Jonah in uh, down the hall in his bedroom. I don't know what he's doing. Noah's probably walking around. Or Noah, yeah. They're all walking around out there. Okay. Can an, uh, Samantha Bamantha, can an entity make a noise in your head in a way only you can hear? Yeah, of course. Um... This is how a lot of Claire audience feel, you know, they're hearing voices all the time. Um, but they say that they hear it in their head, um, some hear in their head. And that's kind of how we separate people who are sensitive and like Claire audience from people who are schizophrenic. Because in schizophrenia, you hear voices outside your head, but the more stressed you are, the closer they get. And they say nasty things to you. Um, um, where someone who's sensitive, it's more in their head or it doesn't change um, how far it is. And we've actually, um, put, um, audio recorders down and had the pe person who was labeled as schizophrenic write down what they're hearing in their head. And then we'll catch the same voices on the recorder. And that proves to the, the doctors that they're not out of their mind. Hmm. It's crazy. Well, they are, but they can come back from it, you know? All right, guys, I think we're about at the end of it. Um, any other questions <laughs> for this guy? Um, he's a good guy. I'm very proud of him. He, uh, he's gone through a lot and he's just kicking butt. And I can't wait to see uh, what he does, what worlds he creates for us all to watch. I mean, it'd be so great to imagine that in like a few years or whatever, Connor's writing on a show and you're all like, hey, we talked to him. We remember him when. <laughs> we knew him when. That's Before it. his. Yeah. So um, I want to thank Connor for being here. I want to thank you all for thank showing you. up um, and showing so much love for. For me, my family, and and uh, and for the paranormal, Connor. Anything you want to say? Good luck at school, Connor. Look Thanks, at that, guys. Yeah, you guys have been really awesome, really nice. Uh, Connor, what is your favorite city to visit? Um, you know, probably Paris. No, he's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really liked Providence in Rhode Island. It was small, and everything was there. Oh wow, <laughs> Providence. Yeah, man. but uh, yeah, you guys have been really cool. This is. A first for me, and I was really nervous, but you guys... No, they're good people. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Look at all the love from Samantha Mamantha. Wow. Every color you could ever want. Yeah, paint with all the colors of the love. Guys, stay tuned. Um, next week, 
uh, I'll do, I plan on doing another live stream, hopefully putting out another mini lecture video, talking head video. Um, and then I'm out of town the week after that, but we'll try to, we'll try to stream something then too. Um, thanks for showing my son so much love guys. Um, any comments, questions, you know, things you want to see on the channel, leave them in the discussion part of, of, uh, YouTube on my channel. And, uh, I, I read them all. I listen to it. And that's the place to go. Not under each video. That's harder. Go to the discussion part and let me know what you want to see. Uh, nice getting to know you, Connor. Yeah, and it's hey, great to thanks, see all you guys. thanks to our immediate, uh, uh, moderator, thanks for jumping in there and hitting people <laughs> yeah. with wrenches. Amy, we appreciate you did great. it. Yeah, thank you, Amy. Guys, take care. Have Peace, a good night. Love. Stay weird, okay? Bye.